the concept of present value or alternatively present discounted value comes up all the time in most finance classes and a lot of economics classes. But students are usually just given the formula and not given a lot of insight into where the formula came from. So what I want to do here is look under the hood and understand where the present value formula actually comes from. Let's start with a problem that people are generally comfortable with, that being taking some money and moving forward in time and having that money earn a return. So let's say we're investing $100 at an interest rate of 5%. We're investing that money for three years, and our interest is being compounded annually. Note that our interest rate of 5% is 5% per year, and that when we use this to calculate our final amount, we're going to use the number 0 0.05 rather than 5. So we can calculate the future amount by just applying the interest rate. And we'll notice that after one year, we'll have our original $100 times 1 plus the interest rate of 0 0.05, because after one year, we'll have our original $100, but then we'll also have the interest on that $100. After two years, we'll have the amount that we had after one year, Again, earning interest, so we'll have that amount times 1 plus, again, the interest rate of 0 0.05. And of course, after three years, we'd have the amount that we have after two years. Again, now that amount, earning interest, therefore we'd have to multiply the two-year amount by 1 plus the interest rate of 0 0.05 one last time. Another way to write this would be just to say that the future amount is equal to the original amount of 100 times 1 plus 0 0.05 to the third power. Numerically, this is equal to $115 and about 76 cents. More generally, we can say that our future value, or the amount we'll have in the future, is equal to our present value, or the amount we're investing today, times 1 plus our interest rate as a number, to the nth power. You can think of this n as the number of compounding periods. In this case, because we were compounding annually, our compounding period would be a year. So of course, in this case, our n was just 3. In general, you want to make sure that your frequency of compounding, in this case annually, lines up with the way you're measuring your compounding periods, and also that this lines up with the way that you're looking at your interest rate. So for example, if your compounding period is a year, your interest rate needs to be per year, and so on and so forth, if your compounding period was a quarter, a month, etc. Also note that the original $100 that we invested today counts as our present value in this formula. So far so good? Now let's look at a closely related problem. Let's say now that you know that you want to have $100 after three years and you want to understand how much you have to invest today in order to make that happen. Again, let's say our interest rate is 5% and that our interest is compounded annually. Logically, we know that we should have to invest less than $100 today in order to get $100 in the future. And we can actually use the same formula that we had been using to go forward in time to go backward in time. In this case, our $100 after three years is in fact our future value because that's the amount that we want to have in the future. Our interest rate is our I, of course. Remember that we want to put our interest rate in as 0 0.05 rather than 5. And because we're compounding annually and looking at a three-year time horizon, we know that our N is 3. If we plug this all into our formula, we see that we get 
100 is equal to our present value times 1 plus 0 0.05 to the third power. And now we can solve for our present value by dividing both sides by 1.05 to the third power. So we could say that our present value is equal to 100 divided by 1.05 to the third power, which is $86 and about 38 cents. Note that all we've done here is rearrange the formula that we had initially used to go forward in time and collect interest on our money. And we can say that present value is equal to future value divided by 1 plus the interest rate to the nth power. If this looks familiar to you, it's because it was, in fact, the formula given to you as the present value formula, but now you get a little bit more insight into where it comes from. In our example, we describe present value as the amount we would have to invest in order to get a certain amount in the future, but present value can be used more generally to describe how much an amount of money or a payment at some point in the future is worth to us today. For example, let's say hypothetically I were to promise to give you $1,000 in five years. And you could think about that and say, okay, getting money in the future is nice, but not quite as good as getting it today. What is the amount that I could be given today that would make me equivalently happy is this $1,000 in five years? That's exactly what present value is calculating for us. As a result, the present value formula is very helpful when trying to compare different streams of future payments or future cash flows because the present value formula allows us to bring everything back in time and say, how much is this worth to us today? And in that way, helps us normalize so we can decide which future cash flows are more versus less attractive. To do this, just remember that our future value FV is the amount that we're going to get in the future. If we're getting more than one future amount, then you would just do the present value of each future payment and then just add them all together. We have our present value, which we can think of as the amount that we could be given today that would make us equally happy as this amount that we would be given in the future. And we have our I, which we can think about as the relevant interest rate or discount rate for the particular project or investment that we're considering making. And the relevant interest rate is going to depend on a number of factors, prevailing interest rates in the economy, the level of risk of the project, and so on and so forth. But once you've decided what this relevant interest rate is, the present value calculation is pretty straightforward.